What's up guys? It's been a really hectic week and uh, that's why this first video may actually come out late, I'm not sure. But I've got a few minutes, so let's go ahead and go do some more work on this M90 swap. Okay, so we're back working on the manifold again, getting ready to do some more of this swap stuff. And once again, the weather is completely terrible, so I'm in the Ponty Shack trying to get some stuff done. And what I have done today is we took this and hogged this out a little bit to increase some flow. There. Now this is the passageway where the coolant goes from the back passages to the front passages. And if you look at this, it's already open. So coolant can already go through there, but I just opened it up a little bit more to compensate for the fact that this is no longer here. I opened it up probably about the diameter of what those tubes would have been. Um, I don't want to open it up too much because I don't want it to just be sometimes there are restrictions built into these things in places on purpose and I don't want to mess with that. So the next thing I'm going to do is put that back. I did get a replacement gasket for it here, which is just a simple line that up. And then we're going to run a couple bolts in. I did clean this cap up too. It was pretty, pretty nasty looking. And I am just going to see if that's an eight. Yep. I'm just going to snug that up with this for right now. Final verdict is not in. Final verdict is not in on the color choices for the manifold. I'm still thinking about that. So you guys feel free to keep throwing suggestions my way, but I've gotten a couple pretty good suggestions so far. So I have some ideas. I just haven't 100% decided yet. Now, the next things we have to do with that on and back together, we're probably going to clean this up, but I'm more than likely not going to put it back until we actually put the manifold on the car. Then we've got this to go back, which I need to clean up. And then I also need to, you need to either Teflon tape the threads on this, or you need to put some sealer on them before you put it back. So I'll probably do that next and then we'll see where we're at from there. So before we go any further with the lower manifold, let's take a look at the actual supercharger itself. This is the Gen 5 supercharger this the easiest way to recognize this versus a gen 3 if you're not sure which one it is one there's no stud right here there's nowhere to bolt down the top of the uh, fuel rail two this throttle body is a four bolt throttle body instead of a three bolt throttle body so completely different there and right here you're going to have your purge valve right in the side of the supercharger instead of being out separate now this is exactly how I got it from the junkyard and I grabbed it with everything I could on it. If you're going to do this swap, I would suggest doing the same. I kept the boost control solenoid and everything. They don't normally charge extra for that. I got it, the matching manifold. I got all the bolts. I tried to hang on to everything I could possibly get because you never know what you're going to need. Now things we're going to do to this supercharger though, here in just a minute for prep sake anyway, is we're going to need to replace this T because it's broken, actually two different spots it's broken, which is really common on these, they don't last very well. While we've got it here, we're gonna pull this PCV valve out, probably clean it out, make sure it's good, reseal it, and I have gaskets for that. Then I'm going to pop this snout off. We're gonna put the another coupler in here because I'm sure this one's no good, and we're gonna change the fluid while it's out. Then I've just gotta decide what I wanna do as far as cleaning it up and making it look better. And then I'll show you some of the other stuff. But first, in the first video, you'll remember we plugged these coolant lines. 
Now the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm not going to be using my factory throttle body. I will be using the throttle body off of a North Star V8. Now the North Star V8 throttle body is right here. This is another used one. I found this actually at work. And uh, one thing you will notice about this, it doesn't fit, but there's an adapter for it. And the adapter that we're going to be using is this ZZP adapter. Now that's going to bolt on basically like this. And if you'll notice back here, this is where those coolant passages would lead and they are blocked off. So there's nowhere for that coolant to go anyway. So you want to block it off down here. And the reason being mainly that you just don't want there to be an air pocket there that can't get out anyway. So that's why I'm doing it that way. So when you see that, that's what's going on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is some maintenance on the supercharger itself. The first thing we're going to do is pretty simple. We're just going to clean out this PCV valve and replace this. You just take these two bolts out. With that out of the way, you take this little plate off. And in here you'll see a spring. The spring is there to hold this down against the seal and stuff on the inside. We're going to leave that seal alone. All we're going to do is you want to listen for that to rattle. This one sticks a little bit, which means it's a little dirty. Then you just want to clean out the inside with some brake clean. Make sure that it's nice and clean. You want to make sure it's rattling freely. That'll let you know that there's nothing in there that's causing it to stick. With that working like it's supposed to, we're just going to drop that back down in there. Put this spring back, just like that. Then we're going to need to remove the old gasket from this piece, which depending on how long it's been there, you might be able to do by hand or you may need to do a different way. What I'm doing here is just taking a razor blade, prying under the edge and using that. Be very careful doing this. And it is not my fault if you attempt this and cut your finger off. So just remember that. But this is how I'm doing it right now. Once you get the majority of it off, you can probably just go over it with a little, I'm probably going to use this sanding board here in a minute. And that will probably get the rest of it. Then once you've got that cleaned off nicely, if you get the upper set that comes with it, it will come with this gasket. That gasket is just going to sit right there. And you're just going to take these two bolts and start them and then run them down evenly. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to run each side down a little bit at a time to compress that spring. Just like that. Then what I'm going to do for appearance purposes is go back behind this and cut this excess gasket off. You don't have to do this. It's not going to hurt anything. I just think it looks a lot better not being there. And there you go. That's the PCV valve. So the next thing we're going to do is it's going to be time to check out the front of this, change the supercharger oil, and change the coupler. So the first thing we're going to do is pull the fluid plug out right here. Be careful with that little O-ring. You want to make sure you keep that. And pulling that out, you're going to be looking at a 3 16 Allen. Then all we're going to do is I put a pan down under this. We're just going to flip this sideways and dump the fluid that's in here out. Can actually just sit it up like this and it should just drain all by itself. So the next thing to do now is we're going to take all of these bolts out of the front of the supercharger. Once I get something that will actually break them loose. There we are. 
Okay, and now the snout is off, which looks like this. So the next thing we're gonna do, now if you wanna pull the rotor pack out, you would grab right here and you can pull the actual rotors out as well. Um, it did slide out a little bit, so I think we may do that just to take a look. But the main reason I was coming in here is because I wanna replace this coupler, which on this particular supercharger doesn't look bad anyway. But I'm just gonna throw this ZZP one in there just for a little upgrade and so that we know it's in good shape. Now, if you wanna pull the rotor pack out, what you're gonna do is the next area where it splits right here, you're just gonna to have to try to grab just the front and you can possibly just wiggle it out or you may have to take a chisel and just kind of tap it a little bit to get it to, to get it moving. And once it comes out a little bit, you can see the rotors will actually just slide right out like that. And there is a part of your supercharger that does the supercharging. These are the rotors themselves. I'm just gonna sit them over here for right now and we'll take a look at the case. Looking at the case here, you can see right up in here, there's your needle bearings that the other side of the uh, rotors ride on. I'm gonna wipe all this down and we're going to add some grease to those. I'm not doing a full rebuild though, so I'm not planning on getting super involved with this, but I do just want it to be clean. I want it to seal good when it goes back together. I want to make sure the inside of this bore is free of anything that it shouldn't be in here. So all of that is looking pretty good. Then what we're going to do then is we're going to first put some anaerobic sealant on this surface so that when they go back together, they seal good. We don't want to take any chances on air or anything coming through here that shouldn't be. This is way, way easier to do now than it is in the car. So this is definitely the time to do it. Once you've got a good thin layer all the way around it like that, the next thing that we're going to do is take some needle bearing grease. And this is the actual General Motors needle bearing grease that if you order it from them, this is what you get. It's basically just a high temperature grease in a very small container. I'm just going to put that all over the ends of the rotors before I try to put them back in so that they'll have some extra fresh grease on there when they go back into the bearings. And I'll try to see if I can squeeze a little bit into there too without getting too crazy. You don't want to, I don't want to play around with it too much. Because I certainly don't want to dislodge anything. But that should be good. Now, now that that's done, the next step is we're going to put these rotors back in. Trying really, really hard to make sure they go in the right way. You don't want to bang these around in here or scrape them against the housing any more than you have to. Okay, once you've got that in there and it's all the way in, that everything is lined up. The only problem I'm having is the, sometimes you have to tap them a little bit because of the uh, dowels not wanting to go back in. So now that that's in, we're gonna wipe down this surface. It's actually really, really clean, so I'm not gonna to have to worry about cleaning it so much as just wiping it down and getting the fluid off of it like this. Then we're gonna go back with the anaerobic sealant again. We're just putting some anaerobic sealant all around the outside of this. Anywhere the two are gonna to come together to make sure that there are no fluid leaks when we're done. And once again, way easier to do now than to do on the car. 
So if you're gonna do it, now is the time to do it. Don't put it on the car first and then do this. Okay, and once you've got all that ready to go, the next phase is to just take this, oh, let the rest of the fluid come out of it, which I should have done first, but I guess I wasn't thinking about that. We'll wipe this down a little bit, then just line it up and line these three up with the other holes, which is pretty easy. And then you line the dowels up and it slides right together. Then you're going to restart all of these bolts and it looks as though on this model all of the bolts are the same so it doesn't matter which one you put where. Then we're just going to kind of lightly snug this up. To hold everything together. old sealant can make these bolts hard to put back in sometimes. So after tightening those and I was not able to in this amount of time at least find the torque specs for these bolts but if any of you guys know the torque spec please let me know down in the comments and I will pin your comment for everyone else to see and then uh, I won't have to look it up. So if you know it, and I'm sure one of you probably does, just let me know. Um, but what I'm doing right now is I'm just cleaning off the rest of this anaerobic sealant that squished out around the sides. Uh, it looks like it squished out pretty evenly, which is really good news because that means that it got a good even coating on the inside, which should make everything seal nicely. And with that, that's yeah, looking good. That's a new coupler and the new bearing grease. So everything's nice and lubed in there. The next thing I'm gonna do is pull this plug and we're gonna fill it back full of fluid. Okay, so I pulled that out. The next thing we're gonna do is these AC Delco bottles of supercharger oil come with this little nipple, but you just have to cut the top off of it to get it working. But if the supercharger is out like this, this works just fine without having any kind of like an extractor or anything like that. You can basically just put this on here and just turn it right in. It is supposed to hold two bottles of fluid, so hopefully it will, but you'll know when it's full because it will be up to the level of the hole or running out. This one may not run out because since I had it apart, it's lost the usual little piece of fluid that normally stays inside. So it's probably gonna need all of both of these bottles and still have a little bit, a little bit left to go. Now, the coupler that I took out, as I said, looks brand new this tells me a few things either this has been replaced or this supercharger and the engine that it was on were not very high mileage to begin with which is possible i got this off of a comp g that i found that was in really good shape so that makes me feel good about the other bearings and everything else going on with the car all right now at this point as you can see it is running out the side that tells me it is full so what I'm gonna do first is just cap this thing off like so. For some reason, the Gen 5's plug seems to be a lot harder to line up and get started than the Gen 3, or it's just me. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I've taken the one on my other car off many times and not had a problem, but I swear every time I go to start this one, I have to kinda do it a couple times. But anyway, then I'm just going to lightly, I'm not actually going to torque this. I'm just going to lightly snug this tight just so it doesn't come off. And that's it. Now, next step, 
I'm just gonna clean this really good. Then what we've got to decide to do is what we're gonna do as far as cleaning it. Am I gonna paint it? What is it gonna look like? All of that kind of stuff. So that's it. This thing is just about prepped. There's a little more cleanup to do and I'm still undecided on a couple things that I may or may not do on it before I put it together. But I've also got to decide on a color scheme. You guys gave me some good ideas in the last video about this, but I'm not 100% sure yet. I have one idea I'm kind of leaning towards, but if you guys have any other ideas, this is your last chance to throw them down in the comments before I decide. The next video will go over making this thing look good. I've got a couple more parts coming that's gonna help with that. And then after that, we should hopefully be close to being able to get this on the car. So I'm gonna let it go for this video because it already feels like it's been long and I'm kind of out of time. So uh, like this video if you like this series, give me a comment, let me know what you think about what I should or should not do during this swap or if you see something I'm not doing I should or whatever. And uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you see the next video when it comes out. Thank you so much for watching and peace.